welcome to another Ask the Experts. I'm Rachel Landry, and today I'm joined by my colleague Mackenzie Mills, the technical content writer here at the company. Today, Mackenzie will be talking to us about dynamic hill shading. All right, Mac, take it away. So the dynamic hillshade tool in Global Mapper is a great tool for 3D data visualization when you're working with terrain or elevation models. So here in this Global Mapper workspace, we've got an elevation model loaded and we're seeing the raw elevation values here. They are shaded with our default Atlas shader, so we're seeing that variation in elevation. And on the left side of the screen, we have an elevation legend showing us you know, what those colors mean so that we can interpret them. Now this is a great visualization. Um, we're seeing that change in elevation. We can use this layer for analysis, of course, but we can also enhance the view of this data by enabling hillshade. So going up to the view toolbar and enabling the hillshade, we're applying a light source, which brings out additional texture and detail in this data. So this is the same data we were seeing with that previous visualization, but we've just applied some lighting to it. We see that updates in the 2D and refreshed 3D viewer. And we can take this a step further and customize this light, this hillshade, by opening the dynamic hillshade tool from the viewer toolbar. So doing this, we get our dynamic hillshade dialog, and I'm gonna first enable a checkbox to color elevations based on visible elevation values. So this will rescale our shader to interpret only the elevation values visible in our main view. Enabling that updates the 2D and 3D viewers, and we can see a slight change in our legend and the colors using, being used to depict our elevation model cells. Next, on the left side of the dynamic hillshade dialog, we can move the light source around. So I'm just clicking to drag and move the, the light source, the sun icon, around to different positions, and we can see how that changes how our data looks. We can also use multiple light sources, so maybe three in this case, move those around, and again, we're just changing the lighting that is applied to this data for visualization purposes. Returning to only one light source here and moving to the right side of the dynamic hillshade dialog, we can change some other lighting characteristics. So we can change the ambient lighting or the overall light um, used in this visualization. Bringing this towards bright will apply more light and really brighten up the whole um, visualization of this entire terrain grid in both the 2D and 3D views. Vertical exaggeration um, lets us determine how harsh some of the shadows are going to be and how textures are pulled out with this light that has been applied. So bringing this up towards high gives us a rougher looking um, visualization of our terrain model with more shadows. The shadow darkness determines how dark those shadows will appear. So somewhere between dark and light, we can adjust that specific lighting. And then highlight will provide a whitened highlight to any areas that have direct contact from this light source that's being applied. So bringing this up a little bit, we can start to see that in the 2D and 3D views, those highlighted portions that are receiving direct light from our light source. In this dialog, we can also change the overall shader. This can also be done from the viewer toolbar, um, but the light, the dynamic hill shade or hill shading that we've applied um, through this process will remain constant regardless of how we change that shader. So whether it's a single color shader like the daylight shader or the gradient shader or a custom shader like the coastal shader that I've designed here in Global Mapper, those lighting characteristics that hill shade maintains um, and is still applied in the 2D and 3D views regardless of what shader is being used. So again, this is a great tool for you know, enhancing the visualization or bringing out specific characteristics in um, a terrain grid or a model. And it's a great tool for visualization in Global Mapper in the 2D and 3D views, whether you're just you know, working with analysis or looking to capture screenshots of your data. Mackenzie, thank you so much for showing us that workflow. I know that our users will find it very helpful. To learn more about Global Mapper and Global Mapper Pro, please visit bloomrebelgeo.com today. And as always, thank you for watching and we look forward to seeing you next time.